gente, que lo que, you already know this is Punch Wrong Boxer, a.k.a. Mr. Moonshine himself. What's going on with these fighters, man? What is going on with these fighters? Look, if y'all follow the channel, if y'all familiar with the channel, I always say I'm here to preserve the sport of boxing, here to preserve the modern day warriors, the modern day gladiators that put their life on the line for pure entertainment. But do these fighters want to preserve themselves when they hit the pinnacle? Do they want to preserve their greatness? And it seems like they don't. It seems that when they hit the pinnacle, it's so easy for them to not stay focused, not stay hungry, um, not to enhance their greatness. I mean, they work their whole life, their whole life for free and the amateurs or sacrificing their, 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 their brain, sacrificing their body. Um, other people sacrifice their time and life for them as well and money. And it seems like these guys just, they, they get unfocused so easily. They get, they, they lose the hunger so easily when they hit the pinnacle. Now, I understand it's not easy to get there, but when you get there, and you work your whole life for it. Don't you want to sustain that? Don't you want to preserve that? Don't you want to enhance that? And these fighters just don't want to do it. George Cambosa said that he's not the emperor anymore. He's back to being ferocious. That's like me saying, damn, I, I left the hood and I got a good house, picket fence and stuff like that. I got a great family. But you know what, man? Ah, I need to go back in the hood, man. I need to go back to the projects and stuff like that, man. I need to go back in the block. Could these guys handle the success? I mean, you work your whole life to reach the success that you have reached. But it seems like these guys can't handle their own success. It seems like they know how to suffer. They know how to struggle. But then they don't know how to sustain their success. And I want to know why. Why? I believe, look, I believe there's a lot of people that respect what fighters are, what fighters do. But I don't think that people overly respect their their mind, their brain. There's a lot of fighters out there that want, I thought that wanted to be like Flo Mayweather, achieve what Flo Mayweather has, but I think they just want Flo Mayweather money. They don't want to um, follow in the footsteps of hard work, dedication. Again, to reach that pinnacle, to reach uh, um, the championship belts and beat and be other, uh, other fellow great fighter, you got to work hard. But I think that a lot of fighters, you know, their ceiling is so, it's so small. It's so, it's not where it needs to be. I, and and that I believe that the type of work that they put in, the ceiling is too low. It's too low. Is that the problem? I mean, look, George Campbell's a BT from Lopez, right? I don't believe a lot of people believe that he could beat him. He came to New York City, took the hard road, you know what I'm saying? Fighting out here in, in the States while he's in Australia. And then, once he hits the pinnacle, BC for Lopez, then he got he goes back to his hometown and they give him a stadium, a stadium, and the bag. And he lost focus. It's like Keith Thurman. Keith Thurman was the number one welterweight of the world. A lucrative welterweight division. Right after, right after uh, uh, Floor Mayweather and, and things of that nature. And then... He says after the Manny Pacquiao, after he lost the split decision, the biggest fight of his career, pay-per-view event, sold he sold it good. And then in the PBC podcast, after the fight, I believe it was like a week, he said, I couldn't find my killer instinct. And he was gambling the night before. You telling me you work hard your whole life for this moment. And you couldn't find to stay, you couldn't find the time to stay concentrated. You couldn't, you couldn't find the killer instinct when you needed to find the killer instinct. Because if it would have been Manny Pacquiao that day, then Keith Thurman would have been, you could probably say top three. Top three sellers in the sport of boxing. They find a girl, they get married. And look, I'm not trying to put put it on their on their lady, but let's be real. Y'all let y'all, 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 y'all fall in love. And then y'all, y'all, y'all forget everything that y'all forget about the hard work and the sacrifice y'all, y'all put in. And the sacrifices of others that helped you reach to that pinnacle. And then y'all let a woman just come out of here and, and, and suck the life out of you. And suck this, the, 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 the hunger out of you. Huh? We, let's go back to T.F.M. Lopez. He, he, he stated, he reportedly, he stated, you know what I'm saying? That he had women problems and things of that nature. Baby mama problems and mar marital problems. And that affected his, his mind. Let's go back to the Nakatani, Nakatani fight. You know what I'm saying? 
Family was going through arguments outside uh, outside the ring. You work your ass off and it's so and then get distracted with things that was not even there for you to get where you need to be. And then it's unfocused and, and then it's not totally focused, not totally there. In the Cambosa fight, leading up to the Cambosa fight as well. And I know it's hard for men, you know what I'm saying? When they when, when women out there, they put their, you know, um, they they try to use your kid to to, uh, uh, to get to you and things of that nature. Look at Adrian Broner. Look at Omar Figueroa. Look at Danny Swift Garcia. Yeah, they achieved certain things, but they could have they could have sustained it better. All of a sudden, all these guys and and and, and, and excuse me. All of a sudden, now that, that you reach that that level, and now you reach the money and stuff like that, all of a sudden, all these guys is having mental illness. Ryan Garcia, shout out to Ryan Garcia. But I mean, when y'all was on a come up and y'all had nothing, there was no mental illness. But now when y'all got everything, now was a mental illness. I'm not downplaying it, but I just don't understand how y'all let things creep up when it was supposed to be hard and nobody believed in you and you're working, you're working for free and things of that nature. And then you reach the pinnacle. And now you ha have all these problems, not focus at all. Like Andy Ruiz, Andy Ruiz. Got dropped by by um by by I believe top rank. Then in five weeks he gets a fight with with with, with Anthony Joshua beats Anthony Joshua surprised the world and stuff like that. Then he get the rematch. Now he's he's the pinnacle. Now he's the man in the heavyweight division. And then he ain't hung he ain't hungry no more. Well he hungry and stuff like that. But I mean in terms of of challenging himself and and and, and the hunger of being a warrior couldn't stay in training. I remember Earl Spence. He said before the car accident, he was self-destructing. What is going on? Like, don't you, fighters, don't y'all know, like, y'all put in the, y'all know y'all put in that work. Y'all sacrifice so much. Y'all sacrifice friends, y'all sacrifice food, y'all sacrifice girls, y'all sacrifice a lot of stuff. And then when you hit that pinnacle, it's like y'all just want to drop it. Like, all right, that's it. It's almost like when somebody wants to, um... They want to get on a diet, instead, but 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 you you rather should take that into a lifestyle. Let's say somebody be like, hey, yo, I'm going to be vegan for three months because I want to lose this much weight, and then you lose the weight, and then that's it. All right, let, let me let, let me go back to the restaurant. Let me eat whatever I want to eat. Let's go back to the club, drink and stuff like that. I already hit my goal, and that's it. And then you and then you get twice as fat, twice as out of shape, twice as health un un unhealthy. Instead of establishing that as a lifestyle, and see, like, you see, Flo Mayweather, that's a lifestyle to him. But for these guys, it's, the gas ceiling is too low. So now y'all need to go back into that survival mode to achieve what y'all already achieved, but y'all couldn't handle success. There's a lot of fighters out there that's being admired, but y'all can't handle success. Why y'all let things that never build y'all affect y'all? And distract y'all. Why y'all let things that never build y'all distract y'all? Women. Women. These chicks wasn't even there. They wasn't with y'all when y'all was shooting in the gym. Y'all was they was they wasn't with y'all when y'all was sparring. They not they don't go to your hospital. They're not there when you get in on um, your first contract, when you're in the amateurs, when you travel all over the place, and then you reach that pinnacle, and now you're giving everything, every energy to this woman that ain't even they ain't even do nothing for you. Come on, man. Pussy can't that, that pussy can't be that good. There's a lot of pussy out there. I'm gonna tell you like this, man. There's some warm, juicy-ish going around. Why? Why y'all why can't y'all sustain? What y'all work your whole life for? Hmm? And it's just not George Cambos. It's a, it's a lot. It's a plethora of a lot of these fighters. So let's see if George Cambos could regain what he achieved. But I'm going to tell you like this about the sport of boxing. And in, the, and, and, and in life itself. Because I always say that boxing translates to life itself. The window of opportunity is always like this. It's almost like a drug a drug dealer that was getting his money. He was going, he was doing his thing, and then he get locked up, and then he want to come out. He think he want to reach that 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 Nicky Bond status like he used to have, and he can never reach it again. In boxing, is this window of opportunity? A lot of these fighters right now, the elite fighters that you see right now, is this window of opportunity. 
And it could be taken like this. Look at Elvis Rodriguez. He lost to Sims Jr. and got dropped by top rank. Luckily, that he got another opportunity to get picked up by PBC. But a lot of these fighters, I'm going to tell you like this. And fighters know it's all about opportunity. Look at the Mises Andre. The Mises Andre is still waiting for a great opportunity. Hmm? This one of opportunity. Campbell's might not reach that pinnacle again. Andre, uh, uh, Adrian Broner may not reach. Luckily, that Errol the True Spence was alive in that car. Came out of a lot. Came out of a lot after that car accident. He got a second chance. We know the history of the sport of boxing. A lot of these guys, they leave out the game with nothing, just with brain damage. Y'all have a lot of examples out there for y'all. For the for the fighters today that's dealing with certain things that can't handle and can't sustain and, and let other things from the outside affect their, their career and their potential greatness, you got a lot of examples of past fighters for y'all not to F up. You don't got to go through the same mistake because they went through it. You don't got to go. Y'all don't got to go back into survival mode and stuff like that to, to gain that survival and get hungry again. You don't got to be like Rocky Balboa and go to Philadelphia with Apollo. You don't got to do that. You can learn. The smart one learns from other people's mistakes. You don't got to go through the mistakes. The smarter ones learn. They analyze from other people's mistakes. You know all the story. Mike Tyson is still here to, to, to live and tell his story and a lot of fighters as well. So why don't y'all want to stay hungry? Don't, why don't y'all want to sustain y'all potential greatness? It's inevitable that your hard work was going to lead you to achieve what y'all achieve. So why y'all short yourself with not staying focused? Why y'all let a uh, scoochie in, um, come, come in between you and your greatness? It's time for y'all, those fighters that reached that pinnacle, it's time for y'all to get right back into that gym. And give yourself that favor. Give yourself the chance to sustain that position, to sustain your greatness. Cause y'all work your ass off since y'all was yay high. Children, y'all, most of y'all learn been fighting since I was five, four years old, six years old, seven years old, been in the amateur, 10 years old, and now y'all reached and y'all can't handle success. Y'all role models, y'all motivators, y'all inspirational. Y'all letting people that is that that trying to follow in y'all footsteps, that success is no good. That success can't be sustained. Y'all superheroes. And superheroes, they live on, man. Go for your legacy, man, because legacy is the real immortality. So I want to see what George Campbell's going to do. Win, lose, or draw, you fight the way that got you to that pinnacle. All right? Because Devin Haney... <laughs> Seems like ain't nothing, ain't, ain't nothing bothering them. He don't got no woman problems. He don't got no baby mama drama. And it seems like he's fighting, still got something to prove. Ain't going to be easy. And getting back to the top is not going to be easy. And I'm going to tell you like this. Those who lost, it's going to be harder. But I believe in y'all. So I believe in the Adrian Brown to go out there and keep on working with Kevin Cunningham. I believe in Tifa Lopez going to go out there and be Jose Pedraza and get that Josh Taylor fight. I believe in, in Danny Dubois. He's going to reach that, that get another crack at a good heavyweight. I believe in Andy Ruiz. I believe in Deontay Wilder. I believe in all the, uh, a lot of these people. Don't tell me that money got y'all all filled up because y'all know money comes and goes. But legacy... Stays forever. Legacy is the real generational wealth. Let me know what y'all feel, man. Subscribe to the channel. Smash the like button. Love you. God bless. And on to the next.